So when we're doing the Lagrange error bound, uh, when we're using that formula, it, the the best way to figure out what it means and how we use it is just to to actually use it. So let's do an example here. I'm going to do an example that involves the the sine function. So this is a, a fairly practical example, um, in the sense that if if you were programming a computer to evaluate sine, um, this is an interval here. I, I actually had a different interval, but I changed it to pi over two, negative pi over two to positive pi over two. This is an interval here that uh, that is really useful because of the nature of sine, because it's periodic. If we know the value of sine anywhere between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, we can find the value of sine anywhere. Okay, so this this is a good interval to restrict it to. Uh, because now we can use that to find the value of sine anywhere on the sine curve um, from negative infinity to positive infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the first three terms of the Maclaurin series for sine. Um, what are the first three terms of the Maclaurin series for sine? Okay, I think you guys got it. So we've got x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And these are the first three non-zero terms. So this is, this is what we're going to use to approximate sine. This function right here is, is an approximation for sine around zero. So we want to know how accurate is this going to be when we're on this interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. We know that if we get far enough away from zero, it's not going to be accurate at all. It's, it's going to get really far off. If I plug in a really big number for x, say like 100, I'm going to get 100 to the fifth power over 5 factorial and 100 here and 100 to the third power here. And I'm going to have a number that's way outside of the range of sine. So as long as I'm close enough to zero, I'm going to be close to the value. So I want to know exactly how close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Now let me ask this. How many derivatives did we use to get this term right here? Remember the formula for... Um, for the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series looks a little bit like this right here um, where we take the the nth derivative divided by n factorial mm -hmm. so since we have uh, and then we have x to the nth power so since we have x to the fifth over 5 factorial that means we use the fifth derivative of sine to get this term so when we're using this we're going to be actually using the n plus first derivative which would be the sixth derivative now, we want to approximate this remainder term, or at least we want to know the maximum value of the remainder term, um, because what this remainder term is going to do here, if I, want to, if I want to make this exactly equal to sine, I can just add the remainder term here, and that remainder is going to take care of the difference between this function and this function. So if I know the maximum value of the remainder term here, this is going to tell me the maximum value of my error. So this formula here says that the remainder is going to be less than or equal to, that's, that's coming from this part right here, it's going to be less than or equal to the maximum of the sixth derivative of sine um, on this interval. Now, here's the thing about this. The sixth derivative of sine is going to be um, negative sine, I think. It really doesn't matter. It's going to be cosine or sine or positive, or negative cosine or negative sine. It really doesn't matter for the purposes of this. Because if I plug in a number for x and I evaluate, um, let's say I'm able to evaluate the negative sign of whatever my x is here, then it kind of defeats the purpose of what I'm doing. So let, let me say that, explain that a different way. I'm trying to approximate the sign of, say, 0.1. So if I put 0.1 in for x here, um, then I'm going to get some answer. I'm going to get some approximation for sine. And I can figure out what the maximum value of the remainder is by evaluating the, the sine of 0.1. Well, if I know what the sine of 0.1 is here, then I don't need to be doing this, right? What we're going to do when we're doing this is instead of trying to evaluate this sixth derivative at Point 0.1 or whatever value it is we're, we're trying to evaluate, um, we're just going to take the maximum value. So we know that sine is no more than 1. The worst case scenario, 
the thing that would make this remainder the biggest is if this sixth derivative is 1. So we're just going to say that it is 1. Uh-oh, went a little too far there. Um, for this part here, the x minus a, um, that's the, the uh, radius of the interval. So that's the distance from 0 to pi over 2 or from 0 to negative pi over 2. Um, so the x value here, that's just the end point of the interval. So we're going to take pi over 2 to the 6th power because we're taking the 6th derivative. Remember, n is 5 because okay. this is the 5th order. And then we're going to divide by what? n plus 1 factorial, which would be 6 factorial. Now, again, the reason we're doing this is so that we can do stuff by hand rather than relying on a computer or programming a computer to do something, if, if that's what's necessary. So evaluating something like pi over 2 to the 6th power is a little bit tricky. So instead of doing pi over 2 to the 6th power, let's just pick a number that's a little bit bigger than pi over 2 that we know how to work with. Pi over 2 is about what? Pi is a little bit bigger than 3, so pi over 2 is a little bit bigger than... 1.5. So again, I'm going to do a worst case scenario. I'm going to pick a number that's bigger than pi over 2, but that's really easy to work with. And so my maximum error that I'm going to find is actually going to be bigger than, than what it actually is. So I'm just going to just treat this as 2 to the 6th power. So I know that this right here, um, I'll save that for later. I'll come back and talk about this. Um, but I'm just going to say right here, that this pi over 2, that's less than 2. So I'm just going to treat it as 2 to the 6th power, and then we have 6 factorial on the bottom. And this is something that we can evaluate easily, where the pi over 2 to the 6th power would not be so easy. Um, so we've got a bunch of 2's that are going to cancel here, and that's going to be 4 over 45. 4 over 45 is about a tenth. Um, it's actually less than 1 tenth. So I know that on this this uh, interval right here, what we've found is the remainder is less than or equal to this, which I know is less than this, which is less than one-tenth. So if we follow these inequalities here, I know the remainder term is going to be less than one-tenth. Now this is a very crude way of doing it. So we know it's less than one-tenth just by our quick hand calculations. Um, if we were to use a machine to help us out, we would know um, that from this formula right here, this approximation for sine on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 is within two one-hundredths of the actual value. So as long as I plug in a number that's less than pi over 2 and bigger than negative pi over 2, so let's say I try plugging in 1.5 into this function right here, I know that my answer is going to be less than two one hundredths off from the actual answer. Now, this is not that practical right now because we have calculators uh, available to us. We have computers available to us. Um, this is something that you would have had to do back in the 60s unless you were going to you know, sit in front of a computer for hours and, and use the computer to, to calculate something like this. Um, or back in the 1600s and the 1700s when calculus was being developed, um, this was the only way to do it. This was the only way to say, okay, I want to find the value of sine, and I want to do it accurately. How accurate is my approximation? 